If you're selling covered calls, you're probably achieving great returns. But to ensure that you actually keep those gains, you have to take profits at some point and invest those profits into Beanie Babies. Okay, well maybe not Beanie Babies, but you do have to put that money somewhere. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about how I personally handle my stock market profits and what I recommend that you do to ensure that you don't lose all of those precious gains. My name is Charlie, and on this channel, I make videos about building wealth and achieving financial freedom so that you can free up your time to focus on the things that you truly care about. And if you wanna achieve financial freedom using your stock portfolio, you need to have safeguards in place to protect your profits. So the main thing that I like to do is start by taking a portion of my profits from covered call writing and using them to purchase shares of my long-term holds, which for me are typically just index funds. Because when you're selling covered calls, you have to own 100 shares of each stock, so that can lead to a lot of your risk being concentrated into just a few particular companies. And I don't know about you, but I don't want this guy in charge of my entire portfolio. Howdy, partner. So by taking some of your profits and moving them elsewhere, you can diversify your portfolio so that if one or more of your covered calls stocks drops in value, you'll still have most of your previous gains protected. And I've got a goal allocation that I use myself, which I try to stick to at all times. So currently I keep about 75% of my portfolio in covered call stocks, and that includes a small number of poor man's covered calls as well. Then I keep about 15% in long-term holds and about 10% or less in leaps options. So I've found that works pretty well for me, but even that only goes so far, because as long as your money is in the market, it's at risk of dropping in value, no matter how diversified you are. So that's where withdrawing from your portfolio comes in. And I think this becomes essential as your portfolio grows in value. And I get it, when your portfolio is growing rapidly, it is tempting to leave all of your money in there. But at some point you need to protect those gains in the same way that you would if you were playing a game of poker. So if you doubled your chips after the first hand, you probably wouldn't go all in on the next hand, would you? I mean, sure, you can multiply your chips again if things go right, but you could also lose them all if the game doesn't go your way. Whereas if you had taken, say, half of your winnings from that first hand and just kept them on the side, you're guaranteed not to lose those. And you'd still be left with more chips than you started with, so you'd be in better shape overall with less risk on the table. Now, of course, when you're just starting out in the stock market, it doesn't really make sense to withdraw. In fact, you should actually be doing the opposite and making regular deposits into your portfolio. But once your portfolio really gets up there in size, I think it's smart to take some of that money off the table. And how much you withdraw just depends on your particular needs, what other sources of income you have, and so on. But I think that withdrawing about 20 to 30% of your profits each month is a good general rule of thumb. That way your portfolio is still growing because you're only withdrawing a portion of your gains, but you're at least taking some risk off the table and locking in those profits. Because at the very least, you're gonna need to pay taxes at the end of the year. And if your portfolio is particularly large, your tax bill will probably be higher than what you can cover with your other sources of income alone. So it just makes sense to use some of your profits to cover that tax bill. But after you've taken care of your civic duties, things get a bit more fun because now you can look for other ways to diversify your risk outside of the stock market. So personally right now, I have a small amount of money in crypto, just about 5% of what I have in the stock market, but there are tons of alternative investments out there. You've got precious metals and commodities, real estate. I'm not gonna tell them to invest in Beanie Babies, okay? <laughs> So yeah, real estate, luxury watches, art, even wine. And I actually started out my investing career back when I was in college with sneakers. So just do your own research and see what you like to invest in. Now to be clear, I do keep the large majority of my investments within the stock market because the rate of return with the strategies that I use is just so high and so reliable. But I think it's smart to diversify at least a little bit so that all of your eggs aren't in one basket. Now we also can't forget probably the most important use for your withdrawals, and that is building up your emergency fund. Which in other words, is just cash that you keep on the side that's not invested into anything. So if you don't already have an account with enough cash to cover at least six to 12 months worth of expenses, I think it would be smart to set one up, especially if you plan to use your stock portfolio for income at some point. But even if you don't, it's always smart to have cash on the side to utilize during a market downturn or just in case any unexpected expenses arise. So you'll definitely wanna check out this video next to see how to set up your emergency fund and how to use it properly. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll talk to you in that next video.